you ever got the feeling that some divine power is just endlessly entertained by putting you in harm or otherwise making you go through things that you were trying to avoid, no matter what efforts you expend to avoid said things. That's, that's how I'm feeling right now. We go on a ship to avoid the Underdark, specifically because Aerie was terrified of coming down here. Then the ship gets wrecked by bloody Githyanki because our captain is a bastard. And we end up down here anyways, after helping out a bunch of crazy shark people. Fuck my life. Seriously. Fuck my life. So, hello everyone, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate. Now, I've gone ahead and done some the rest of the exploration in this area off camera, and... Well, you did miss some minor things, for the most part heart as it happens it wasn't anything especially interesting there were like two whole quests one of them was neat in concept but kind of grindy and fiddly and repetitive in practice basically there's a settlement of what's effectively just Underdark gnomes, I think, living up there. The guy who's basically their mayor asked me to help him out because they'd uncovered something. And because they mined down too far or something, and he wanted me to check it out. Before they simply buried the thing, he wanted to see what was up with it. Just in case burying it only pissed the thing off. So we ended up killing basically a balrog but as i said it was good in theory and narratively and thematically speaking that was great but unfortunately we ran into the slight problem that the actual fight itself was a little bit fiddly and irritating because every single time i tried it and this demon got in a bunch of hits and effectively caused Toby and Minsk to rout because they were the only members of the group who actually had weapons strong enough to do any damage because you had to have plus three weapons. And while I do have a couple of them, they're not going to last for an eternity because they'll only be effective for us to use while we're down here. As you can see... I have Toby using a pair of drow longswords right now. Minsk is using Jahor the Bleeder here. Uh, that is a bastard sword. Wait a second. I only just thought to check this. Yeah. Unfortunately, Minsk, you're going to have to relinquish your bastard sword for the sword of chaos because you have no proficiency with a bastard sword you can have the cloak of mirroring back though I also sold a bunch of stuff and cleared out our inventories a bit we're up to like 18,000 gold As you can see, not too full up on the whole inventory thing. Do I will want to ditch that drow plate Toby has. That was literally for that fight I was talking about with the demon, because it gave him some extra armor class. Yes. You point, I punch. Mm-hmm. Anyways, as we was forward for that quest with the totally not a Balrog, we got ourselves this light gem, because... Apparently the mayor has a friend who can help us with locating Bodhi and Irenicus and dealing with that whole mess. And we've come outside 
the cave that I'm pretty sure contains Something this friend. Mean. If I read what we heard from him in dialogue correctly, he was a little vague on what she actually is, but given of that course. we seem to be going into a cave for this particular conversation, I vote Dragon as the likely identity of our would-be savior. I vote Dragon. I wouldn't dream of refusing. It seems fairly likely at any rate. In which case, it's probably good that we have our current party and not animate or something, because let's be honest, this current group is not that likely to cause diplomatic issues. So, definitely good for us. If this does turn out to be a dragon, then... Welcome. Welcome to As my I said, lair. dragon. I have watched your progress with great interest. Have you now? Don't we just sort of pauses for a moment, jaw drops at the sight of the dragon? And we'll try and be a little bit diplomatic, just to prevent uh, issues. My lady, you honor me with your words. I'm sure I do, but flattery is not why I've allowed you you to come here. Do not think me too generous. I am not as tolerant as others of my kind. Yes, definitely a good thing that Animan and, God forbid, Viconia aren't here with us, or this would have degenerated into violence by now. I am Adelon, the Guardian, and I've done my duty as well as I have been able for many a century. I was not the first, but I know the history. And you are truly a magnif magnificent sight, my lady. I am awed. <laughs> yeah, Imwen's always sort of been one to be more attracted by, ooh, it looks pretty than anything else. <laughs> really, if you remember little interaction concerning her pink dresses, or skirts rather, back in Baldur's Gate 1, just to give an idea. Yes, yes, of course, but I have little time for your starry-eyed fawning. Listen well to what I say. My chart is the elven ruins above, an ancient temple to... An ancient temple that marks the gateway to the Underdark. There are others elsewhere, but this was the first. The first? Hmm. That's interesting and all, but tell me something, my lady. What is so special about this temple that it warrants having a dragon as a guardian. I doubt this is a typical arrangement after all. The temple marks where the elves of Dark Hearts first descended, truly separating from elven kind and becoming drow. The drow keep the outposts of Ustnatha here as a symbol, one that is fought over regularly, though I have governed the hostilities and seen peace for decades at a time. But there has been a crime here recently, and I can no longer honor my commitment. I'll ask your assistance, and in return, I will aid you. Let's see, and if I do not need your aid? Well, we obviously do need her aid. We're not going to be getting anywhere on our own. Toby can figure that out for himself. I do not respond well to requests for favors. Perhaps if I got a taste of your hoard? Well, Number one, that would be a very stupid thing to say to a dragon who could probably slaughter us with a single flick of her tail. If how powerful this one is can be discerned at a glance, yeah, I don't think we'd stand much of a chance. And we do respond well to requests for favors. We do requests for favors all the time, after all. Well, speak on. I will listen and see what I can do. Silence. 
I, I will tell you when you may speak. This is a very important matter, and I will not be interrupted. Of course, my lady Adelon, Toby, do keep quiet. Uh, my apologies. I didn't mean to be rude. The drow respected the borders of this place for centuries, only venturing out for sport and small skirmishes. That was the balance. The two you seek, Miss Bodhi and John Irenicus. I believe they have made a deal with the drow for their own safe passage, and offered a way to tip the scales against their elven enemy. It is unfortunate that they did not offend you in some way. It might have been spared the headache of this journey if they had to face an angry silver. <laughs> at this point, Toby is just kind of staring wide-eyed at the exchange. And also, uh, sort of thinking to himself that he agrees with Jahira, but not wanting to say it in case he pisses off said silver dragon. You may ask why I do not extend my influence. I cannot. Irenicus bargained with my most prized possession. He violated my lair and stole from me. They have taken my eggs. Vile creatures, such a crime is unthinkable. No, that's not really Toby, to be honest. That's very unfortunate. I assume they threaten to destroy them should you venture out. As I said, that first option was a bit more of a sanctimonious, holier-than-thou, animan type of thing to say, if I'm honest. I've been informed that to move from my lair is to cause the destruction of my eggs. It's the final straw in a long list of atrocities I have been witness to. Boo shakes with disbelief. Such a crime will not go unanswered. You must retrieve them for me. Do this, and I will reveal a safe escape route. I'll leave the Underdark. One that emerges close to where Irenicus plots his next move. In addition to placing you near your target, I will also make a gift of an item from my horde. It will be powerful and worthy of your service. Hmm. Well, what exactly is it that you th think I can do, Adelon? You're asking me to face an entire city's worth of drow. I mean, I'm a skilled fighter to be sure, and the rest of our group are no slouches either, but even I can't take on an entire city's worth of fighters. That's a bit much. Do you have anything that would help me tip the scales? I realize the danger of the request, but I do not ask you to simply assault the place. No, there is a much more subtle way to succeed. You will take the identity of a group of drow I dispatched recently. A party from another city destined for Ustnatha. To become such a hated thing, I do not look forward to that. I will transform you, and you will be able to pass among the drow with ease. They will not see through the fiction I create. When you arrive at the gate, tell them you are from the city of Chednasad that you seek sanctuary within Ustnatha. It is done. You now resemble the denizens of the Drow City, complete with a house insignia that will not draw undue attention. I suggest you act like Drow when speaking to anyone you meet.
ready and oh yes. Just as I thought. Do not question the matron mothers. Right. Onward then. Continue on in. And slavery. Ah. Wonderful. Ah. Oh. item disintegrated apparently <laughs> and uh, yes if you look at the actual early avatars of our characters we do indeed look like drow which is yes. rather nice to the task at hand Check the map. We want the male fighter society. Should probably not dick around with all this stuff. I mean, I could poke my head into the tavern and just chill for a while, but I think not. So, 
just head to the Fighter Society pronto. We don't want there to be any trouble. Things are not in a good way for us in here, and I do not want to be causing trouble. Victory for the Spider Queen! Ho oh, there, have you seen the surface bitch? It is fine sport, but she's quick on your feet. I'm sorry, what? I'm, I don't really know what's going on here. Yeah, sure, she went that way. Excellent, she'll taste pain soon. Yes, totally not really too keen these people already. Apparently I took a wrong turn. Let's deal with that. never saw much of the cities from the circus. Are they all so crowded like this? Not sure if this would really qualify as a city, Airy, and you might want to dial down your habit of saying stuff like that out loud while we're here. Or for obvious reasons. And trust me, I'm no more pleased to be here than you are. I will try to make sure this is a short stay. Solafane is the fellow we're after, and he's right over here, as our luck would have it. Let's say hi. Uh, you are the newcomers that have been sent my way, I see. As if I do not have enough to accomplish in a day without suffering for the welfare of the weak. There is no refuge to be had in Ustnatha, fools. We pay for our existence here with blood. You shall do the same. My name is Solafane, and from now you shall do as I say to prove your worth to the matron mothers. Failure is death. And just because there are females with you, do not think to challenge me. You are foreigners, no better than slaves until the matron mothers say otherwise. Suppose I should get your shepherding underway. Have you a name, Vagrant? Or shall I simply refer to you as the male? My name is Veldrin, and I demand the respect I am due. Ha! You shall get none from me, regardless of your achievements in Chetnasad. Your spirit may serve you well in Uthnatha if you know when to show it. No matter, one of the matron mothers has taken an interest in your arrival and wishes to avail herself of your skills. She sent a handmaiden to speak with you at the entrance platform to the city. I shall be there, no doubt, to herd you on your mission like a nursing mother. Now go to seek her out now. If you are intelligent, you will go to the entrance platform quickly. Handmaidens are notoriously impatient. You must be subservient, Toby. To them, we are lesser drow, and no doubt have no suspicion. Any sign of disobedience would bring scrutiny upon us. The drow have a harsh culture, one I am not overly familiar with. We must harden our hearts if we are to blend in. The alternative is discovery and death. Yes. Well, 
I have a feeling that drow submissive and surfacer submissive are not quite the same thing. But from what I've seen with the couple of brief interactions we've had with Viconia, they respect strength, and so if we show we're willing to stand up for ourselves and, as I said, essentially call them on their bullshit, then hopefully that will be enough to prevent them from being too suspicious of us. And now we meet with a handmaiden at the city entrance. So essentially back the way we came then. It should just be over here. Let's go. I'm assuming that's the handmaiden since he's standing right there. So let's go have our little conversation. Loth be praised. Do not address me directly, Worm. Any more impertinence from you, and you shall feel the lash of the tentacle rod as it flays the flesh from your bones. When you are in the presence of one of Loth's unfavored. Our matron mother, you do not speak until spoken to, fool. Where's your sense? Give me handmaiden Imre. This was a most promising male by my judgment, but young and recently proven and lacking in intelligence. I was in error to bring them. I shall send them back and find others who may serve the matron mother's will. Please accept my most humble. You shall do nothing with them, male. You'll have to do. You'll be punished later. For now, I will address the mail personally. Your story has been verified so far, Veldrin of Chetnasad. And that is why you have not been sold as a lowly slave or made an amusement in the tavern. But you still have no place here. You are fortunate, indeed, that many of our finest warriors are busy with preparations elsewhere. Fortunate enough that a matron mother has decided to make use of you. And to that soul hope, Worm, and do not fail the matron mother. If you do, the horrors of your punishment shall be far more terrible than had we beset you at the gate. Explain what has occurred, Solafoon, and be quick about it, male, for the Spider Queen demands my attention. At once, handmaiden. If I were to speak of the Devourers, Veldrin, you would know of what I speak, yes? Devourers, you mean the Mind Flayers, correct? Yes, I know what they are. Mind... Flayers. Flayers of the Mind. An interesting term for the Psionic Devourers. Perhaps native to Chet Nassad? No matter, you are correct. A matron mother's eldest daughter ran afoul of devourers while scouting. Her full companions fled or were slaughtered, and she was taken captive. They know a prize when they have one, the devourers. They will bring the daughter to their city, and should they reach it, she shall be lost forever. With the preparations of the armies, we are the only ones who can intercept these devourers must go to their cavern entrance and wait for them. Handmaiden Imre has given me a blessed, uh, a blessed item of Loth that will pull the devourers from their astral travel there. And it is there we must pounce. The matron mother has no desire to see her eldest daughter become a snack for the devourers. So we must not fail. Do you understand, Veldrin? Yes, and to meet you at the entrance to the Illithid Caverns and ambush some Illithid 
who have a matron mother's daughter captive. Exactly. The Illithid tunnels are in the southeast portion of the main Underdark cavern. I will be scouting and you will find me there when you arrive. We do not expect the Illithids for some time yet, so you have the opportunity to rest and resupply yourself if that is what you wish to do. You must meet me at the entrance to the Illithid tunnels within the next 12 hours, no more. Do not be late. Indeed, there are many exquisite horrors that may be found for you in the demon web pits should you fail. And if you decide to run, the Driders will eventually track you down. And for you, Solifun, the Matron Mother expects even better from you. Report to the temple before you leave the city. As as you so as you wish, handmaiden. Okay. Mm-hmm. As you will. Okay then. So we have a bit of a rescue mission for the drow. We should probably play along for the time being. Uh, since we have to get ourselves ingratiated with them and, and gain their trust and such for the time being, so that we are able to find these eggs. I don't have any need Something to need. rest or resupply. I'm in of course. quite a good shape, but... I am going to pay a visit to the tavern and just see if there's anything in there worth checking out. Quests and the like. Worth giving a look, at any rate. I wouldn't dream of refusing. Well, as far as taverns go, this is one of the more interesting ones. I'll give him that. Ready and whatever I can do to help. Do not question the matron mothers. And apparently, they are telling tales. Well, I could do with some more information, maybe find out some more about the city in case I ever have to answer highly personal questions. Tell me something of Usnatha's history, then. Think of the city's history, eh? Yes, I suppose you would know nothing of it, ignorant lout. Do you even know the part of heart Usnatha played in the scattering? Scattering? Bah, are you completely devoid of sense? Your house mother should be flayed alive for her negligence of your instruction. The magical battles caused the collapse of Berenden, the great cavern once held by the dwarves. Most drow were crushed, only the favorite survived. Hoops of drow fled the rubble in every direction, seeking new holds to establish their power. Set upon by our enemies, that was the scattering fool. Usnatha was untouched by the Great War, and hordes of drow came to our walls for protection. Devourers and eye tyrants followed, seeking to eradicate them. For one century, our enemies waged constant war upon us. The walls of Usnatha held, however. We pushed our enemies back in a merciless victory. Many of the drow then left Usnatha to find larger living spaces, more resources to plunder. Establishing your beloved Chet Nasad for among other places. There would be no Chet Nasad were it not for the walls of Usnatha. That is the part Usnatha played in the scattering. Do not forget it. And what of your own feats? I've slaughtered many in my time, male, so do not ask such questions if I have not. I'm as battle-hardened as any in the fighter societies. <sighs> but 
Okay. That was interesting. I'll be going now. Yes. A bit of free Just storytelling. Maybe handy eventually, but even though we do have you must gather your party before time venture. before we have to meet in the tunnels, I think it would be better if we didn't dally. Of course. Who knows what sort of creatures we're going to have to fight our way through. Those tunnels, after all. We may as well get ourselves. Something you need. Yes. Alrighty, well, ready and able. Here we are. Onward then. I was supposed to meet him, and lo and behold, Solifane has made it here before us. I do what I must, when I must. Know this well. Good, you are here. I was beginning to wonder how long I would have to remain amongst these forsaken rocks before you showed up. But your timing could not be better. I sense that the Ithalids will come within range soon, and I may safely put them out, pull them, even, out of the astral plane. If you question for the battle, Veldrin, make it quick. Is there anything in particular I should know about fighting them? Any special tactics or anything? Not much. Strike quickly before their mind powers can leave you helpless for them to devour your brain at their leisure. Protect yourself if you can. But enough talk, I sense the Ithalids approach. Wait and I shall bring them out of the astral plane when they come close. I'll help however I can. Okay. Time for a little bit of buffing then. Nature's servant awaits. Chant. Less. What can I do? And cast chaotic commands. Shahira. She doesn't have that spell, so it'll just be Toby and Mint. This is a lot more Am I needed? What do you want? Get a cast while everyone else. It is done. Uh, 
Back. Out of range. Alright. Let's see if I can't manage it with just the two of them. Unlikely, but possible. Especially given the number of these guys that are turning up. Yes? You are no match for my skill. Target the mind flayers first. And then everyone else. Okay. No. Now everyone get them. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Everyone go, go, go. Second number Hulk. Bring him down. It's about time my captives were finally defeated. Hmm. It's beginning to think they would reach their Ithalid city after all. Greetings, Fear, daughter of Aldolase. I trust you are uninjured. Who is that? Solifan. So, Major Mother sent you, did she? How that must gull you, risking your life to save mine. I did as I was commanded. Yes, you did. As any male should. You've done well enough, I suppose. And your assistant. Hmm, who's this male with you? That one. That is. I'm sure he can speak for himself, male. Am I correct? You have a tongue, yes? Who may you be? I am Viltrin of Chednasad. Indeed, a foreigner. How very odd. So I'll have to speak more. You and I, once we are back in Usnatha. I shall head back to the city on my own and inform the matron mother of your successful service, Solifane. You have proven useful. You should be grateful. You're going to return on your own? No. What if you encounter danger once again I shall not be responsible for? I appreciate your touching concern, but I can handle myself. And it is my command, so you have no choice. Farewell. Well, she's friendly. Definitely. Definitely overly friendly. Unfortunately for me, I seem to have avoided those mind flares Blasted doing any permanent wench. damage. May the Spider Queen bite at her black heart. Careful there, Sola. I'm pretty sure she's still within hearing range. I shall follow her to ensure her overconfidence is not in danger at all. Turn to the city on your own, Veldrin. I shall meet you at the entrance. Okay then. Something you need. Ready and able. Okay. Yes, as you will. Okay then. I'll be back soon enough, but... No, it doesn't appear we get any loot off of these guys. Well, we are done with that, so it's... Now just basically head back to the city. Mm-hmm. Of course! Something you need. What you hear is still a little bit on the stunned side, though, so I have to wait for that to expire. Ready and able. I wouldn't dream of refusing. Now let's return to the city and see what bit of. 
rescue mission type work or whatever they have us doing next. Mm hmm. Of course! Hey, Sola. I do what I must, when I must. You have returned. Know this well. Finally. Good. Not enough I had to worry over Fari's safe return. I was not about to start concerning myself over yours. Yes, the daughter of the matron mother is safely returned. You've done an excellent service. I am told the matron mother is pleased. <clears throat> Fari also sent a command to you which must not be ignored. You are to meet her in the tavern here in the city. She wishes to speak with you. Although I cannot wonder why. Eh? What the hell is that supposed to mean? That's very weirdly phrased. She asked for you too, Sullivan. You are all to rest and relax in the tavern as a reward for your services. Handmaiden, I have no wish to... You wish to earn a punishment a second time, male? She'll do as she says. She shall see all of you in the tavern within a day's time. No more. That is all. Well... Something you need. Uh, this Ready Fala, or I wouldn't dream whatever the hell her name was. Yes. I don't give a damn enough to pay attention to her mm -hmm. name, but oh, yes. she's obviously the, just the nicest person ever, isn't she just? Yeah, I am going to be so glad when we don't have to interact with that bitch anymore. Toby's just met her, and she's already managed to get on his nerves, which, let me tell you, is quite the achievement. Given how thick-skinned we've had to be Just as in the I past, it really is. And there she is. So let's quick save. Just to satisfy my mounting paranoia, something's gonna go wrong, and go have a word. Ah, it is you again. So Veldrin arrives at last to greet the female that he rescued so valiantly from the clutches of the filthy devourers. And this is the point at which she decides to essentially give us a verbal smackdown and break with stereotypes, no doubt. I must have been invisible and uninvolved during that encounter, I see. Speaking to Veltrin, Solophane, when I speak to you, it shall be to command you to lick my boot. Keep your bitterness silent or lose your tongue. Yeah, not the nicest of people, as you can see. Ignore your masculine commander's outburst, Veltrin. Consider this a time for reward and enjoyment. Mother Ardeles pleased by your performance. Solophane's abilities are known to her. She was delighted to learn you are such a powerful fighter. Who's not the good use such as you, Veldrin? Amongst the drow, only the strong survive. You could have slaves at your beck and call, rewards at your fingership, the favor of Loth. How does this sound? Well, uh, that does sound rather nice, actually. Remember, we are 
trying to act the part of a drow. And the drow are, let's be honest, kind of bastards to everyone. So we need to act the part. Excellent. It's good to see someone with a modicum of ambition. Good thing not everyone has a true grasp of. Isn't that right, Solifane? Perhaps he has not yet seen the hook behind the worm, Fiere. The ignorant are always blissful. Sometimes the worm is worth the hook, fool. I might have thought you would have learned that lesson long ago. Seeing as you are so capable, Veldrin, you and Solifane have been given another task to complete for the greater glory of Loth. You will meet me on the city platform, away from curious ears, but not right away. Rest and amuse yourself for a time. I shall be here a while. After I leave, take no longer than a few days before you meet with me on the platform. This is as the matron mother commands, and so shall it be. Okay. Take some time to rest, she Stuff says. You need. Onward then! I think we should actually do that as it happens, because a couple of us have taken a bit of injury, so we should see to that. To walk there? apart from house and queens, to walk into the grave. I'll take a room, thank you. Apparently my party is too scattered you for that. I punch. Where Minsk goes, evil stands aside. Four Ready and here. able. To Do not question the from others. I would like a room. Thank you. Shame that they didn't take the time to spend on some different graphics for the fact that we are sleeping in a drow room, but yes. you can't have everything, I suppose. As you will. Nice as that might have been, it's not a deal breaker or anything. and find out what this next mission is. Now that we have rested up a little bit, so that is exactly what we will be doing. You must gather your party. Of course! Let's head back into this section. She is. Your chatter is starting to wear on me nerves. Most powerful of drought. Give my insolence in speaking before being told to do so, but I must beg your attention a moment. Make your case quickly, slave. I have little patience for your ilk. I would not dream of bothering you with my own petty concerns, so oh great drought. No, it is the wishes of my master that you must hear, please. I beg that you come close to the tank, that he might make contact with your mind. Tank? What manner of creature is your master? The tank is a hindrance that my master would rather do without. It is more comfortable than the coldness of the stonework in the city. Come close to him and he will speak to your mind. It is the way of his kind. Please do not tarry. He will announce an alarm to the city if you keep him waiting. Okay. I assume they mean this tank, mm -hmm. so... I wouldn't dream of refusing. We'll go have a word before we speak to... Fiere over there. We can talk to the tank. Hear me. Hear my thoughts in your mind. I am ambassador, but I have a service I demand of you, one you will perform discreetly and with haste. Hmm. What 
kind of creature are you that you can step through my thoughts so easily? I am superior, is all you need to know, surfacer. Yes, I see what you are. It is printed across your transparent mind. You'll do the task I set before you, or your identity will appear in the mind of every drow within this city. Are my thoughts clear? Good. Well, shit. I ask of you. I command a deed of violence. I call for a death that I might learn more of this place. It is simple, brutal, and more suited to you than my petty servant here. Quil... Mm, Quilue, a priestess. I would learn of her faith and the power it grants. Her mind is the prize, and I would have you bring it. Wait. How exactly do you expect me to do this? I can't simply drag a drow priestess to you. Everyone will see, and that will expose me as surely as me not doing it for you. What do you expect of me? I do not require her as a whole. As I said, it is her mind that I require. Kill her. Slay her in her home and temple. Treat her brains and bring it to me. That is the task. That is the command I give. You obey or I reveal you and you die. That is your choice. Yes. You don't really leave me with much choice, do you, Mr. Fish Tank? Very well. I will do as you say, but don't expect me to like it. Quile makes her home behind the second door from the bottom in the Female Fighter Society. Attack quickly, and none will sense the deed. Return swiftly, I demand. Well, shit. Something you need. Whatever I can do to help. Mr. Fish Tank is demanding that we murder someone for him. Or for her, I'm not really sure. Anyways, he's demanding that from us. And as much as Toby hates the fact he's been placed in that situation, well, we don't really have a choice in the matter. We have to do what he wants. But first, we gotta speak with Fairy and see what she wants. Let's hope it's not something that we have to get done immediately. I'll pop off and kill that priestess first if I can manage it. God, this place is just horrible. It really is. Ah, it is you again. You have finally come. Good, your timing is excellent, as I had just arrived recently myself. Trust you are ready to leave presently? What exactly are we to be ready for, Fayere? What have you... Why have you brought us out here? Is this some fool ambition of yours? None of my ambitions are foolish, Solifane. We are here to perform a service for the good of the city and the matron mother. I wasn't aware Mother Ardules did anything for the good of the city. Great. Drow politics. Wonderful. Can we not get involved in the political ambitions of a city leader while I'm down here trying to nab some dragon eggs? That would be great. Silence. You will obey, male. An eye tyrant, a beholder, is in this city smuggling adamantine. The matrons have decided we are to kill it. What is this? Did you say we? I did. I am to join you in this duty. The eye tyrant has come on his spelljammer ship near here. Solophane and I will go and s Solophane and I will go and scout it out alone. Veldrin, I trust you can find your own way to the ship. It is off one of the platforms in the southeast of Ust Natha. Do not take too long to catch up. Solophane, you can catch up on old times. Yeah. Ready Why do I have a Just feeling that want. those two have issues? And she said don't take too long, but I still think that we have time to go to the Female Fighter Society and kill this priestess before we have to go off. Yes. And 
deal with that. Uh, uh, beholder. Eye Tyrant, as she called it. I still think that we can deal with this priestess situation first. So that is what we are going to do. But really, this place is just the worst. That's Toby's thoughts right now. In this Drow city and Drow society as a whole, we are seeing no redeeming values in it whatsoever, so... Our desires right now are just to find what we need to find and get ourselves the hell out of here, or we have to do anything worse than murdering someone because a fish tank told us to. Though how it can get worse than that, I really cannot imagine. <laughs>